The Human Experience, Inside the Humanities at Stanford University, humanexperience.stanford.edu. Okay, so that's one way of thinking about the relationship between life and art. You could think life is an art. Living well is hard. Right? Living well requires uh, skill and dedication. It requires practice as much as it requires knowledge. That's the first way of thinking about the relationship. But there is a second way of thinking about the relationship. One can also think that living well is enhanced by art, which is to say enhanced by artworks. Artworks can help us to live. How could we fill that in? How could we argue for that claim? Well, I can think of at least four ways, three of which I agree with. Let me start from the one I don't agree with. Some people think that the right thing to do with artworks is to extract ideas from them. Right? So there's the so-called moral of the story, the so-called message. Things like, you know, Hamlet teaches us to be nice to our mother, or uh, not to be mean to our girlfriend, or not to stab people who are hiding behind curtains. You know, stuff like that. So is this, uh, I, you know, this way of reading text just gives me the hives. Here is, if this clicker's working, here's a lovely painting by Georgia O'Keeffe. What's the message of this painting? It doesn't have one. It's not even sending the message that it's not sending a message. It just doesn't have a message. Because with artworks like this, the point isn't to send a message. They have better things to do than that. Sam Goldwyn, one of the, the founders of MGM, famously said, uh, if you want to send a message, use Western Union. That's not what films are for, and that's not what artworks are for generally. So I think it's a, a mistake to look for messages. I think it's a mistake with some serious consequences. In my view, it's a way of not being helped by the artwork. Artworks are experiences. They're not just fancy ways of delivering messages. What they do for us, they do by virtue of the experience they put us through, not by some content that you can extract from it. Imagine if you have tickets to the big game and you invite your friend to come and he says, well, that's all right, I'll just catch the result later. Uh, you would probably think he's missing out on the main experience here. Uh, that, in my view, is the equivalent of reading fictions just for their message. To be improved or helped in some way by artworks, you have to spend time with them. And that, I think, involves refusing to go digging for messages. So let's leave aside that first theory and move to a second. A second theory of how our lives can be enhanced by experience with artworks suggests that artworks don't offer us answers, but they offer us instead questions, crucial questions, life questions that we have to answer ourselves, they deliberately leave a space for us to fill. They deliberately leave certain very important questions open, not all questions, but some very important questions to which we have to give an answer, not by guessing at the author's intention, but by injecting something of ourselves. So for example, is Hamlet right to be so profoundly affected by his mother's remarriage? Nobody says that in the play, and you can't infer it from anything. You have to answer for yourself, and you have to do so by taking a principled stand on who you are and what you stand for. And when you do that, well, you reveal yourself to yourself. You get a profound engagement with artworks in which you put your own values, as it were, on the line is a way to discover who you are. So this is one way in which uh, a, a loving engagement with artworks can be indispensable in the project of becoming who you are. They don't tell you who to be, but they require you to make that kind of decision for yourself. So certain artistic texts help you to know who you are. And at the same time, they give you practice in being it. Think of it this way. Real life presents us with a host of unpredictable situations which require us to make quick judgments. And we don't have time to sit and think, well, OK, before I answer that question, let me think, who am I really? What are my deepest values? Uh, no, you have to you know, get the guy's gun away, whatever it is you have to do. Um, we don't have time. We have to respond to those situations. And ideally, 
We're going to respond to them from the best that we are, rather than just being carried away by the emotions of the moment. Our experience with artworks can be a practice for that. It's a kind of safe space, a simulation space, where you get to be placed into some extreme situations and be forced to make certain kinds of decisions, but it's safe because unlike in the real world situation, there's no danger in case you get it wrong. So those are two theories um, of the role of artworks in our life. The first theory, which I don't like, is the message theory. And the second theory, which I do like, is the question, the open question theory. There's a third way, a third theory that we could think about. And that's the one I was advancing uh, through Plato. Remember, in the symposium, we have a very unusual philosophical text which, whose, whose main character makes crashing mistakes of argumentation. And my claim there is that what the symposium is doing is uh, getting us to do philosophy. It's getting us to do something. And by doing that, it's making us better at it. So on the third view, the point of fiction is to train your brain. Train your brain. It's a, 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 an experience which is carefully calculated to make us engage certain mental capacities and therefore hone them, fine tune our skills in certain crucial areas. So those are three theories, the message theory, the open question theory, and the train your brain theory. Here's my last one, which is gonna bring us back to Nietzsche. The fourth theory is art is a model for how to live. What this means is that we borrow techniques usually found in the domain of art and we uh, uh, transfer them over to our everyday lives. Remember Hamlet. We see Hamlet looking at the actors and saying, wow, you know, what's Hecuba to him or he to Hecuba? That's impressive. If only I could do that in my life. And we, I think the audience, are supposed to feel the same way. We too are looking at actors and maybe we too are supposed to be saying, I wonder if I could do that in my life. Well, today I'm gonna to be claiming that Nietzsche has a similar view about art. He too thinks that art can help us to live, but not by offering us some kind of lessons through its content. Instead, it shows us to live by providing models with its form. Not lessons through the content, but models through the form. The Human Experience. Inside the Humanities at Stanford University. humanexperience.stanford.edu